who have come through a party seat you go and face the electorate again whether with that party independent or a third party that's suppose the lordship had an mla who resigned to fight a new election and the speaker there may be bizarre cases i don't know speaker said no i disqualify you how long will it take a court to give a stay of that order malus but here malus none of these four five possibilities is allowed to be tried because you apply adopt a three step procedure to annihilate the tenth schedule which brings us to the harmonization principle i am not going to cite law malus about harmonization from ordinary petty contracts to constitutional law the lordship's first principle is harmonization from statutory delegated legislation up to the constitution but if i want to make the different point here that why did the 10th schedule come as we lead mr ashok sen speech in malus the when he piloted this 85 thing the whole purpose is that you have come through a party seat you go and face the electorate again whether with that party independent or a third party that's the whole long and short of this was malus have you lordship ever heard this happening except in some very rare cases in england or other democracies there is no concept i have come on a party i'll either resign or i'll malus just leave that and fight again for another party that was the whole purpose of this but what you are telling the court is that no i will affirmatively not resign i will not go to the ec why because i am scared that somebody will disqualify me but then what was mr ashok sen enacting in 1985 malus is enacting a power of disqualification for changing a party what is the purpose of two thirds of the parliament saying so if you can simply what is the harmonization principle that you are referring yeah. to harmonization is this five a four fold well as five originally with the faction otherwise four are the flexibility play in the joints affirmative permissibility part of the 10th schedule and the 21a 21b is the negative prohibitory part you can do all these four without doing the negative part For the negative, you don't have to violate violate the ne- negative part. For any of these four, I will say even if you go to the election commission, you don't have to violate a whip. You don't have to, but as voluntarily give up your party. You say I am on principle. Please decide this. So, in other words, you are saying other than those five instances, four now, every, four, everything else is, everything else falls within the net of ten schedule. And one more thing, I am saying that another. ten schedule uh, absolutely correct, and the ten schedule has both parts. It has those four. It has the negative. it will create a whole code by itself harmonization means that your lordship will adopt my submission in interpretation because it harmonizes the negative and the positive now for 30 seconds see if your lordship does not adopt the harmonization principle the only thing a lordship will have to validate is the three step procedure There's nothing else for this is telling a lordship in the face the three step procedure i want to ask myself malus in which case will the 10 schedule bite let's malus be very blunt what your lordship will do is your lordship's domain but today your lordship's other option other than my option which i am submitting most humbly and respectfully is adopt the three step procedure or validate it or recognize it but then how will tension rule apply it cannot and then malus your lordship should be actually adopting an interpretation which reduces the tension schedule to vanishing point actually vanishes the vanishing point it vanishes every case of defection i will say i'll not resign i won't go to the ec i won't merge Merger is given to you by the para four of the of the of the ten schedule. I will not do it. But as the lordships was told, I am the party. I am the overwhelming majority. I am the main person. I am it. I am it. Therefore, to hell with the ten schedule. So far as on principles of interpretation and much more so of constitutional interpretation than even statutory, this is a much better way to look at it than Maris the contrary view because the lordship Maris gives meaning to both sides. and your lordship does not adopt something what is this other adoption which is pr- propounded to your lordships on the high moral principle of democracy dissent free speech each of my four options gives you that option so what the ten schedule does is it says i am giving you a free speech option i am giving you a democracy option but within my own terms i am not giving you a jungle raj free speech and democracy option otherwise why would i enact a ten schedule See, but merger, Doctor Singh, it was not an option open to them because they were not claiming to merge their party with yeah, either the BJP or any other party. With respect, well, I'm sorry, right. Interpol. Why not? So, merger was not an option. No, it was an option. Uh, they did not choose course, to exercise you're it. You're right. You're right. Ah, that's correct. It's an option. They chose not they to exercise an option. In, an, in the abstract, but they were not following the merger route at all because it's not their case that look, this part of the Sena that's exactly has my point with another party. That is not. That's clear. exactly my point with greatest humility. Then the only point is that in a situation like this. Where they say that we have lost faith with the leader of the party. Yes. 
then the only con then the only option according to them according to you is that you resign and recontest no mr no. no. i will stick stick to my four options that's huh i'll say all the four options are no 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 what 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 do they do then no no whereas resign is one right these nine people with merge with another political party why not but the fact that i don't exercise that option that, that is not an option because merger means that their political identity as the shiv sena is lost there that, that well then in that case if the 10 schedule says that i recognize only this path of exit of, from this room you can't say i'll make a new tunnel to get out but you know doctor so you can't make a new your argument is a problematic argument so that look problem. i'll tell you why because your argument postulates that if you have a dissension then the only way you can express the dissension is to leave the party and merge somewhere else one they say sorry we don't want to leave i mean right. ideologically i am a shiv sena man no. i don't want to leave he says he says i don't want to leave the party so as per kindly see balak no, kindly see the even if sir. even if somebody applies to the election commission at yes. the initial stage instead yes. of in the legislative assembly Correct. and says that we now want the political party to As that we are the political party recognize us so even that according to your argument is impermissible then no no because so because that's outside the so long as five instances that no, you have no, given no 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 one of my five is ec he is not resigned i don't no no one is resignation one is split which is gone now one is merger the fourth is ec he is saying that fourth is ec now whereas if i apply to ec without violating a whip and get a decision If I apply to EC without voluntarily resigning, it's perfectly permissible. I can't be saying I'll topple first and then I'll apply to EC. So remain a member, be a part of it, and and balas vindicate your principle. Absolutely, balas. I just see the reverse of it. But just just consider how it will apply. You first topple the government, then you go to the EC. Why do you like the tension? You that we understand. No, and and balas also apropos by Lord Chief Justice Query, balas, are you harmonizing or not? There is one more thing: the fact that you don't choose consciously not to exercise an option But does not mean you can wish away the option. The option is a constitutional option. It's a constitutional option. It's as equal to split as it was earlier. You don't exercise it. It really amounts to saying this: I want to avoid the ten schedule. So I will put blinkers and close my eyes to four options available. Four constitutional options. The fifth one is deleted, and I will choose a new option, which is only the three-step procedure. First. disable the speaker second approach the governor third be sworn in see the negative prohibition on the ten schedule is two fold one voluntarily giving up a membership and two defying a whip to one a to one b the ten schedule certainly does not have any provision by virtue of which there is a prescription if you do not give voluntarily if you do not give up the membership of the party and yet exercise a right of working your remedies within the party It, it, it then you cannot be held to be a defector right and that is the whole purpose you were elected that's exactly the case no no but because then in that case why do you enact the 10 schedule because 10 schedule is not valid saying that well article 191a just see 194 man is very interesting article let me put this harmonization which is a very important principle in another way what is the scheme of whole this entire system well if your lordship were to make a standard as broad as if you have a dissent you can violate the ten schedule then lot should be uh, unmanageable then, but unmanageable. your argument dr singhvi would be yes. the extreme argument on this side which possibly you can adopt also is that any dissension amounts to the voluntarily voluntarily giving up of the membership of a no, party i'm going to give one more I, I, i'm not an extreme the other argument is extreme i'm going to give a harmonized answer immediately to that the principle can never be malus dissent i am not happy therefore i can go three answers for this one for everybody has dissent malus which political party there are enough inbuilt outlets within the party to express dissent one that is what your lordship will always say two the dissent within the party at the appropriate fora can be followed by any of these four three three you malus if you are having dissensions and you are not satisfied with the party system then malus you will simply express it that i am resigning or doing malus going away with 9 tenths of the people but malus how will you say that mere disagreement entitles me to topple here they have not expressed dissent well this is not a case of dissent i have not gone out and spoken against the party dissent plus this is dissent plus 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 dissent plus toppling you lot should remember that i started because i think there was another previous hearing you should notice this was 191 2 and 194 you should not remember that but just kindly turn to that for a minute 
191 bracket 2 is a clear statutory uh, the constitutional prohibition in the 10th schedule saying you shall be disqualified. That's the 10th schedule comes from 191 bracket 2. Now, well, 194 which follows two clauses later says subject to the provisions of this constitution, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature. And whereas 191A is even more reasonable restrictions. Now, it can't be that mere saying free speech, I can violate, I, I'll violate, you can act within the party constitution. Whatever the party constitution allows, some party constitutions have well, even appellate bodies, some have two level things. You can actually do all of it. Before you go by these four escape routes of merger, resignation, you can do all of it. But ultimately, if it doesn't work, you have to take these four routes. And 194.1, makes it clear subject to the provision of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature of every state this is not much as an open-ended charter and one is plus she kindly see the passage dr singhi according to you when does the governor then award uh, order a trust vote no the governor the governor has no role at all in such a situation governor first answer your lordship is when the government is formed or when the government is about to be formed that's the inception argument the governor will never come into a 10th schedule situation. It's about us, what is the lordship considering an intra-party dispute. At the end of the day, what is this? He said, sure, I don't like you. I think he was intra-party. How oh, do you think to intra-party dispute? How does it even recognize it? Are there are all kinds of feuds going inside parties. How does my lord lay down in English language a judicially manageable standard to control the governor peeking into intra-party disputes for us? It will be a thin end of the wedge. This is nothing but political party A intra. The governor will deal with some constitutional issue or something relating beyond intra party. And how will the governor deal without any specific article, mind you? Once? In a sense, superseding and overdoing the 10th schedule, which is a constitutional article, with 191.2, which we tend to forget. 191.2 read with the 10th schedule. Step one was. Uh, as we saw, I mean, the three, the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes. one second, I just would have to go back to it. Correct. Please. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as uh, CM. Correct. There's one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust I'm vote grateful. communication. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Right. Now, four step. There. Procedure. Suppose, suppose uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker. We are, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the... Except, except in Navam Arabia. Your Lordship, if your Lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Arabia, if we choose. in the broad... No, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your Lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue. In, no, no, I'm saying well, it's, it's an issue. The, governor, the governor asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote. In which case, a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying... Picking out a person because correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote, what is the basis for picking out Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's that goes to the heart of the matter. If I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Tushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet. But perhaps he didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat fahmiyo aur galat fahmiya aur bhi badhi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Malas, the governor in his letter at 326 PDF talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 of the resolution itself there. So, he's hearing yeah, things. No, no, the is. resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So, he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta. Was. Not Bashir. Bhattu. So, the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything falls. Everything falls is very. Uh, no, no. Why? I'll, be, I'll be dealing with Boman. That's actually that's a core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise if your lordship comes to that conclusion plus follows Bomai, which in any case is. So then you, according to you, what? We reinstate uh, the Uddhav Just Tatri read, Kapoor. straight away. Let me just change my attack. So well, let me end this first point by saying. Let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question. 
what happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative if your lordships were to accept their interpretation that's a good way of answering my malus proposition namely your lordship will have nothing left in the 10th schedule how does the lordship operate both the four step or the three step becomes the norm and will be followed in every case to defeat the 10th schedule that's my first point